Got an old car. AM KBDT proudly presents Life Solutions, Coaching, Counseling, Naturopathic Medicine, Insights for Successful Living, and Getting Better with Ann Beal. Happy Easter and welcome to this beautiful day here in Dallas. It is a gorgeous day. The <laughs> sun is shining, the birds are uh, singing, and it's wonderful. It's just such a blessing today to see it and feel it. It's been Not the greatest weather, and I'm sure everyone's been kind of suffering from that, and just have it be so beautiful, especially on Easter weekend. We actually wanted to say thank you, thank you to a a really good friend, Robert Smith, with Eagle Spirit Water, Mm -hmm. who took us up to Oklahoma and just gave us a wonderful time um, touring his hiking trails and seeing the spring on the... um, on the Comanche, Comanche uh, land, land there, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, the freshwater spring coming out with the water and being with the Comanches and just talking to that family. There are 66 Comanches that are on that land. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of land. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just a very nice time. We, he took us, we stayed at a casino and he taught us how to win at slot <laughs> machines, which was hilarious. I didn't know it was had so much to it. Um, if you guys want to know, just email us. We'll teach you everything that he taught us. We could do it in like 30 minutes. Right? We don't know what we're doing. That's not a part of our world. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, though. So we just want to say thank you. And if you heard Dr. Wallach's Let's Play Doctor show before this show today, we just want to let you know that um, we love him. We work with him. He is actually coming in town. Um, if you don't know who he is, he's a naturopathic doctor nominated for the Nobel Prize in medicine. He's also a vet. He is a world-renowned doctor that travels the world and speaks 320 days out of the year. He has his books in the Smithsonian, and it's just incredible with medicine. And so if you are not well and you would like to meet him, if you would like to hear him, he is going to be here May 5th through 10th. And he is going to be speaking, um, and I could even set up some one-on-ones with you for um, help. So just give us a call, um, and we will set that up. So you can call here, 214-810-8755, or you can actually call my cell, 817-501-1638, and we will get you set up. So, um, but with To make it an appropriate time for Easter, we wanted to talk to you, but there's no better story for Easter. We just, you hear so many things that you're going to be hearing on the radio and on TV celebrating Easter and remembering Easter. But I have a passion for Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey was just a wonderful broadcaster. And if you know who he is and you've heard his story when he's talking about Jesus, we are going to play that to start off today so you can hear him. It is the sweetest thing. So... Dr. Gordon placed a beat-up, bent, rusted old birdcage beside his pulpit and told the story about that birdcage. He said an unkempt, unwashed little lad about age 10 was coming up the alley swinging this old caved-in birdcage with several tiny birds shivering on the floor of it. The compassionate Dr. Gordon asked where did the boy get the birds. The lad said he had trapped them. What was he going to do with them? The preacher asked. They told me you can't hear it, so we are going to start it again so you can hear it better. Can you can you turn it up? Thank you, because I want everyone to hear it. Okay, it's up. So here we go. It starts with a story about a Boston preacher named S.D. Gordon. Dr. Gordon placed a beat-up, bent, rusted old birdcage beside his pulpit and told the story about that birdcage. He said an unkempt, unwashed little lad about age 10 was coming up the alley swinging this old caved-in birdcage with several tiny birds shivering on the floor of it. The compassionate Dr. Gordon asked where did the boy get the birds. The lad said he had trapped them. What was he going to do with them? The preacher asked. The boy said, I'm going to play with them. Have fun with them. The preacher said, sooner or later, lad, you're going to get tired of that. And then what are you going to do with them? 
And the lad said, Well, I, I have some cats at home. They like birds. I'll feed them to my cats. Dr. Gordon said, Son, how much do you want for the birds? The boy, surprised, hesitated. And then he said, Mister, you don't want to buy these birds. They're just plain old field birds. They can't even sing, and they're ugly. Just tell me. Two dollars? To his surprise, Dr. Gordon reached into his pocket and handed the lad two dollar bills. And the preacher took the cage, and the boy in a wink had disappeared down the alley. In a sheltered crevice between buildings, Dr. Gordon opened the door of the cage, and tapping on the rusty exterior, he encouraged the little birds one at a time to find their way out through the narrow door and fly away. Thus, having accounted for the empty cage beside his pulpit, the preacher went on to tell what seemed at first like a separate story about how once upon a time Jesus and the devil had engaged in a negotiation. Satan had boasted how he had baited a trap in Eden's garden. He had baited a trap, and he'd caught himself a world full of people. What are you going to do with all those people in your cage, Jesus wanted to know. The devil said, I'm going to play with them, tease them. Make them marry and divorce and fight and kill one another. I'm going to teach them to throw bombs at each other. I'm going to have fun with them. And Jesus had said, you can't have fun with them forever. When you get tired of playing, then what are you going to do with them? And Satan had said, damn them. They're no good anyway. Damn them. Kill them. Jesus said, how much do you want for them? Satan said, you can't be serious. If I sell them to you, they'll just spit on you. They'll hate you. They'll hit you and hammer nails into you. They're no good. Jesus said, how much? Satan said, all of your tears and all of your blood, that is the price. And Jesus took the cage and paid the price. And open the door. And that was Paul Harvey. And that is what Easter's about, isn't that it? That is yeah. what Easter's about. And he ends it with, so it was. And when you think about that, we are on Saturday coming up to Easter. And you think about what Jesus did for us to set us free. We want in this show today to help you know to be free, how to live the way that you can be great, how to live the way, not the way that we think we can be great, not the way that we think we can be successful and full but the way Jesus showed us to do it to be the way he wants us to be, to be happy, full, and successful. And I have Dr. Slaughter here to help me do that today. He has a show called Men Loving Well, and Mm -hmm. his show on Thursday at 1030 on Grace and Truth Radio dot world was sharing about humility. So I asked him if he would share a little bit about that because Jesus was humble. He came very different than what we thought he would come, and he was modeling humility and modeling love in a way that, and, and that was, and he's known forever. And it, if he had tried to be known forever by being everything that the world thinks you have to be to be known forever, it's the opposite of what he was. Right, and even his 12 men, the 12 disciples who followed them all around for those three years throughout uh, Palestine, uh, They had a hard time getting it, you know, and they were with him almost 24-7. And there's a great story that represents uh, the fact about what we're we're talking today. And um, I I think that, uh, as you know, the the focus of my show was on was humility. And um, I my my conviction is that every great person, whether they're man, woman or child throughout history, 
um, have been characterized by humility, uh, by uh, not by uh, self-aggrandizement, not by putting themselves first, not by putting themselves up and above everyone else, but that seems to be uh, a quality that uh, stretches across the boards for people that we would consider great. I mean, truly great. I'm not talking about evil people. I'm talking about righteous people who are, we would we'd say are great people. Uh, humility is a huge uh, characteristic, an outstanding characteristic. And, and yet, uh, often we see it lacking in the world around us. People have a hard time getting that because it seems that from a human perspective, uh, to be great, I move up the ladder and I step on fingers and toes of whoever I need to step on to get there. And and that is simply not what Jesus taught. And so the whole Easter message is about the humility of Christ and passing that on from him to those who follow him. And, um, and the sacrifice. The yeah, sacrificial the, right. in, in nature. Fact, yeah, and that's a good transition. into. I wanted to share a little bit about that. These the, an incident in the life of Christ shortly before his death. And uh, he was talking along the road with his disciples about what was going to happen to him. And he talked about the importance, I mean, the, 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 the self, a self-sacrificial attitude. And he was talking about self-sacrifice, embracing suffering, not, not shunning it when it comes, that that's a part of, of real living. And, um, and so then they went on to another place, and it says that he uh, took them to a high mountain, and, and uh, he showed them a portion of his glory, and uh, they were so stunned that they hardly knew what to say. And so uh, they saw Jesus glorified at that time. And so uh, part of their lack of understanding was that they thought they were, everybody was coming into the kingdom at that point and they were going to be leaders and they were going to be great and they were going to follow Jesus and they were going to be glorified and things like that would be happening. But as they came down from the mountain, he told them, don't tell anybody about this after I am, after I've died, after I've been raised from the dead, then you can tell people about this. And they were sitting there thinking, what on earth does rising from the dead mean? They had no idea what he was talking about. And they went on a little bit further. And uh, finally, he just was very blunt and, and clear with him. He said, I am going to be murdered. People who care nothing for God are going to murder me. I'm going to die, and then I am going to be alive again. And so he put it in as plain words as possible. And they still had a hard time getting it because just after that, James and John, two of his disciples, came up to him secretly. They were sneaking behind the backs of their brothers, the other disciples, and they were asking him to make one of them sit at his right in the kingdom and the other one sit at his left in the kingdom. They wanted to be great. They wanted to, be, they wanted to have the best seats in the house. They wanted to be looked up to. They wanted to be seen as, uh, as great men. And, uh, of and course, at that time, kings did that. They had the most important people sitting on the right and the left of them or the you know next to them right they were they would be like vice regents in jesus kingdom when he came and so and they hadn't uh, seen people being raised from the dead yet right in the timeline had they seen that yet they hadn't seen lazarus that was the 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 most important uh uh event like that in in the life of christ and they would see that coming up centurions well the daughter the daughter who died they hadn't seen that yet either and so what they were, uh, the, the, the thing is, they were, their request to sit at his right and left was in the face of uh, what uh, Jesus had been saying. And he had just said that, and then they came up. Yeah, they, he had said, <laughs> talked about humility and dying and all of that, and embracing sacrifice and uh, suffering. And here, they're, they, it's like they haven't heard any of that. And so then he goes on to talk about how important that is. And then, of course, he gave his life away for us that he would die and we might live. And that's what Paul Harvey was was talking about. And it was clear that they did not understand at all what he was saying. It was very, very clear. Yeah, they they thought that uh, greatness was about uh, crowns and thrones. And Jesus was trying to tell him it was about crosses and thorns. So stay right here and we will pick up humility next.
Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling in Hazlitt, Texas is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. Sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling or email them at lifesolutionscc at yahoo.com. Dish, 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 dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. That's 800 610 739. Attention radio advertising sales professionals. I'm John David Wells, General Manager of 1160 AM KBDT. We're looking for account executives with a specific set of skills. Number one, you have to be infuriated with the corporate radio sales flim-flam game, especially the one that screws around with your earnings. Number two, you must yearn for a stable opportunity to place advertising on an amazing radio station while earning the highest commission rate ever on collected earnings in DFW radio. Number three, you must be willing to work harder than you ever have, make more money than you ever have, and have more fun in radio than you ever thought possible. Call me right now, 214-628-3111. I only have four seats available. Work as you see fit, hit your sales goals, represent the next number one AM radio station in Dallas-Fort Worth, 214-628-3111. No, I'm not kidding. Four seats only, 20% commission on collections, 214-628-3111. See you at our next sales meeting. If you own your own home, you're living the American dream. But what do you do when your appliances and home systems fail? When it's 90 degrees and your AC isn't working? Don't get caught without an Amazon home warranty. Call 800-413-AMAZON. Imagine having a warranty plan that takes away the anxiety of a sudden failure of your home's major systems, like your air conditioning, water heater, plumbing, and electrical system. Amazon Home Warranty is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau and 5-star rated on Google. Call 800-413-AMAZON. An Amazon Home Warranty warranty gives you the ultimate peace of mind with plans starting as low as a dollar a day. Call 800-413-AMAZON or go to AmazonHomeProtect.com. Sign up today and save $100 off the top plus get two months free. Use offer code USA. Call 800-413-AMAZON or visit AmazonHomeProtect.com. Hurry, this offer ends soon. Visit AmazonHomeProtect.com. Call 800-413-AMAZON. Promo code USA. Hello golfers, Pat Wheeler with Texas Links on the Air. For years we have wanted a big and beautiful course under the giant pines of East Texas. Well now we have it. The Tempest Golf Club just gets better and better. Book your round today at the Tempest Golf Club just outside of Longview off I-20 by going to TempestGolfClub.com. That's TempestGolfClub.com. And I'll see you soon at the Tempest Golf Club. What does Meals on Wheels do? They deliver meals and smiles to homebound seniors. But Meals on Wheels does something else. They turn a volunteer's lunch break into a meaningful experience. As small and as simple as the relationship is between a volunteer and a client of Meals on Wheels. Back. Welcome back to our Easter show. We were discussing humility. We had heard Paul Harvey's wonderful description of Jesus' sacrifice foretold by uh, an analogy of birds in a cage. It's wonderful if you haven't heard it. You should go look it up and um, listen to it. It's really wonderful. Dr. Slaughter is here today to help us with humility, understanding how to be humble. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having He's me. Waiting for me no, I was, I, I was thinking, you know, it's... Um, the, I, I, this is such an important concept and char- character trait and, and, and such a 
strong, important virtue. It may be the very highest one in any list. But um, well, and it's interesting because that you say that because when you read about Moses, mm-hmm. it says he was the most humble person like in the land. Like of all people in the world right, at right. that time, he yeah. was the most humble. And I'm thinking, how is that possible? Yeah, you do. Wonder, how is that you? possible? So humility, more than anything, is one of the best virtues. Let me just say too uh, that um, when we talk about virtues like that, um, it's not to say that we always show these virtues. I mean, we're striving always, every day, to maintain a degree of excellence when it comes to what we live and what we say, uh, how we say it. I mean. You know, we want to be uh, we want to be virtuous people. We want to be humble people. Um, there's a part of us, though, that that wants to uh, go the other direction. And so it's always kind of there's this struggle going on. And we may talk about that if we have time a little bit later about the struggle that goes on in us about that to fight against that. But so just to say, you know, we we're not saying we're we're we always uh, achieve the measure of humility that we would like to. But we can say that we always strive for that. Well, and you want to strive for that, and that's what the life coaching track that we take people on is to help them get rid of sabotage and help them be able to have those virtues that they would like to have, be able to display them more. And I think there's a part of everyone that they hate, and they want to get rid of that side Mm -hmm. of them, and that's what we help you do. Right, right. You asked me to consider reading this passage from Mark, Mark 10, about uh, that incident I talked about, James and John, Mm -hmm. and coming up and asking for the seats of glory. And, and so here it is uh, from Mark chapter 10. James and John, Zebedee's sons, came up to him. Teacher, we have something we would like for you to do for us. What is it? I'll see what I can do. Arrange it, they said, so that we will be awarded the high places of honor in your glory, the highest ones. One of us at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said, you have no idea what you're asking. Are you capable of drinking the cup I drink, of being baptized in the baptism I'm about to be plunged into? Sure, they said, why not? Jesus said, come to think of it, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized in my baptism. But as to awarding places of honor, that's not my business. There are other arrangements for that. And when the other ten heard of this conversation, they lost their tempers with James and John. And so Jesus got them together to settle things down. You've observed, he said, how godless rulers throw their weight around. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give his life away in exchange for many who are held hostage. Matthew tells us, this is an interesting point, Matthew tells us that uh, James and John's mother got down on her knees and begged Jesus to do this for her sons. Nobody gets the idea. Nobody gets moms, it. Moms, moms are know, so funny. Moms, I know so. it is, you know. But um, what they didn't understand is that when Jesus was talking, he was using metaphors of the cup and, uh, the, and baptism. And those are both um, figures of speech uh, used in the scriptures of death and um and suffering. And so what he's saying is that they were so glib about it. Uh, can you do this? Are you able to do what I'm going to do? Yeah, why not? Well, sure. They, they just didn't know his plan. <laughs> I know they didn't. They really didn't get it. <laughs> and it is true that most people can't even handle a little bit of power. No, uh, that is really true. Power goes to a person said so fast. I wanted to read, and this is kind of, this is something I, I ran across a little bit ago. Uh, and it's from a diary. Uh, David Parkin was a... Uh, uh, businessman and uh, in in the early ni- 1900s and uh, he wrote this he said as a child to visualize nobility was to conjure up images of kings and queens adorned in the majestic scarlet robes of royalty as a man softened by the tutelage of time and life I've learned a great truth that true nobility is usually a silent and lonely affair unaccompanied by the, temp- the trumpeted fanfare of acclaim and more times than not it wears rags December 19th, 1913. So when we come back, we're going to go through how to remove sabotaging behaviors that you don't like to help you have more humility and all the wonderful virtues that you really crave to have. So stay right here. When we come back, we will teach you how to do that. Two. 
Dick, 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 Dish TV. Houston. Attention. Have you been diagnosed with lung cancer or mesothelioma? Did you spend your life working hard in a shipyard or in the railroad industry? Were you a pipe fitter in the oil or gas industry? Maybe you worked in construction or are a proud Navy veteran. If you worked in any of these industries, there's a likelihood you worked with and around toxic levels of asbestos. If you've been diagnosed with lung cancer or mesothelioma and were exposed to asbestos, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call 800 800- 8145199 Our attorneys have been fighting for over 20 years to make sure that mesothelioma and lung cancer victims get the compensation they're entitled to. Our guarantee to you is that we only get paid if you get paid. So if you've been diagnosed with lung cancer or mesothelioma and were exposed to asbestos, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call now 800-814-5199 That's 800-814-5199 Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? Hi, I'm Joan London with The Place for Mom. Nobody knows your parent or loved one better than you, and nobody knows senior living better than the experts at A Place for Mom. They've helped thousands of families find the right place for their mom or dad. I was so glad that I called A Place for Mom. My advisor really listened and was truly my partner in finding senior care for my dad. She went out of her way to get to know him as a person and was always there whenever I had a question. The senior living advisors at A Place for Mom partner with thousands of families every month, listening and offering local knowledge and advice to help find the best senior living communities across the country. And it's a free service. Here's the number. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-469-7591. There's a place for answers, A Place for Mom. Call today. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-469-7591. That's 1-800-469-7591. What is the Del Walmsley Radio Show? Welcome to the Del Walmsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Walmsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Listen to the Del Walmsley Radio Show Monday through Friday from 11 until noon. It takes a whole lot more effort to get something started in your life than it does to keep it moving. Del Walmsley has moved thousands closer to a great life. The Del Walmsley Radio Show is now on 11. 60 a.m. KBDT, Monday through Friday from 11 until noon. Listen and move toward your great life today. I have to admit, it's getting better. It's a little better. If you'd like to get better, call Ann right now. 214-810-8255. 214-810-TALK. Now more with Ann Beal on 1160 a.m. KBDT. We are now going to help you know how to be more humble. As Dr. Slaughter says, that humility is what uh, we fight so hard against in our nature. Mm-hmm. We want to be proud. And, and we really have grown up people telling us to be proud. Be proud of who you are. Be proud. Be proud. Be proud. But you also want to be humble. And so those two can be hard to balance. Well, there's a good side of pride. You know, yes. I'm proud when my team wins and stuff like that, you know. On the other hand, there's the, the, the downside of, of pride is when I want to be elevated, when I want to be seen, when I want to know everybody thinks I'm the best and they want to see the good parts of me without seeing the bad parts of me. And so I end up being someone I'm not. I end up being on, uh, dishonest. And so, um, you know, that, that's what Jesus came to fix in a way with us. He He, he came to... There, you know, to deal with sin, of course, and, and deal with eternal life. And that, that's the, the whole message of Easter, really. But along with that, Jesus came to give us a full life, an abundant life, scriptures teach us. And so there's this thing where he, um, part of what the work of God and the Holy Spirit and, and the Lord Jesus in the world and in people's lives right now is, is to help us overcome uh, those false self tendencies, we call them, that tend to sabotage us so that we end up not living the, the happy life we'd like to live. And often we're very frustrated. And part of my show is to have on people that are truly joyful, truly happy, mm-hmm. truly have an abundant life and are what everybody wants to feel that real joy and happiness all the time. And how do you get that? Well, it's interesting when I start interviewing these people, when I interview them, when I meet with them, Uh, what I find out about their life. And that's why I really encourage you to listen because it is not what we think. It is not the things that you see going on in media and politics and all that. I do believe that you know that. (laughs) That's not how you get happy because all you got to do is watch that for a little bit and you get angry. 
you get stressed out, you get anxious. And that is where that life leads you. And often to a very young death, maybe in your fifties and sixties. Um, it's just, if you want to live a full life, yeah, uh, uh, a full and, uh, I, and I think it's, I think it's, I think it's quite okay to say a happier life. You yes. Know? If I'm living a full, abundant, rich life, rich feeling life and then not rich with, in terms of money and finances, but just rich in the terms of satisfaction and, and, uh, and enjoying where I am and who I am, you know, uh, but there's a, a part of us that, uh, and, and we, you and I work with this all the time with people to try and help people understand um, there really are, in a sense, uh, two parts of us. Uh, people have suspected that all the time. You know, there's an angel on one shoulder, a devil on the other. And in a way, it seems like that. But there's a part of us that uh, it really uh, it tries to protect us from harm. And it comes from early on in our development, our human development, and uh, it forms our personality. And so what ends up happening is that there's a part of us, it's kind of a, it seems like a, kind of a negative part, and uh, it uses certain characteristics to try and uh, protect us, but it ends up sinking our ship in a way it sabotages us. Those are some things that Freud labeled um, uh, defense mechanisms and things like that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. right. And you know, gosh, I wish we had time to go into that. <laughs> Freud coined the term <laughs> ego. OK, yeah. ego is a Greek word that means I. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And so the ego is the I, the, the letter I. And, and so you know I promote it, myself yes. and my ego promotes itself. Yes. It wants to be seen. It wants to be heard. It wants to be the best. It wants to be on top. And so that, and Jesus said, that's okay. As long as you get there the right way through self-sacrifice. So, uh, and you want to say something? Well, I just know that when we do it that way, we end up having the negative voice in our head all the time. They can come out towards other people too. And it sounds very condemning. It is condemning, and uh, and so we I I thought we might just go through those just check us. off some of the characteristics of that false self voice, mm-hmm. and we all have self talk in our heads all the time. We're always having messages run through our head. But right? the negative self talk is the false self. We call it the false self. Some people call it the flesh. I mean, there's some people call it the child. I mean, there's just so many different names for it. But you know it because it's negative, right? And things like uh, the, the the false self is condemning. The false self is negative. The false self is demanding. The false self is deceiving. It deceives us. We're deceived by right. our false selves. Uh, the false self is relentless. It won't let up on us. It drives us. It's critical. It's punishing. It's afraid. It's ashamed. It's self-focused. It's unaware. It's driven by the past. So many things. I mean, we could go on and on, but Living these are some the of the main oh ones, gosh. you know, that yeah. that we deal with all the time and, and try to help people with. And so, you know, whenever those things show up on our radar, personally, internally and all that, when we feel bad, when we feel we're condemning ourselves, when we feel negative, when we feel attacked by that, that negative person on the inside, uh, when we're reminded of all of our faults and we're kept from thinking about all of our uh, the, the the virtues that we have, that's our false self-talk. And, and it sabotages us. It does not want us to be humble. It want, wants us to be all that. It wants us to be everything. Well, and Jesus set us free to live a life of freedom. We're no longer enslaved to that. Right. And so how do you stop having that sabotage you and haunt you your whole life? And that's what, that's what life coaching does for you. We're actually doing a, a seminar in Oklahoma this weekend, a false self this uh, coming uh, weekend, yeah. code life coaching um, seminar to help people go through this uh, up in OU and OSU are giving CEUs for it. So we have that. We can always do that. But what we want you to do instead is to live free and the voice of the true self, which is the joyful, happy, successful person that you feel free. Its voice is imaginative, positive, loving, creative. It's original. It's confident, confident, not arrogant. It's right, confident. Right. It's truly confident and confident people don't have to tell you how great they are. They just know that they are. They don't have to share it. They don't have to defend. They don't have to do any of that. They're fine with you being who you are because they know who they are and they're confident about it. They're honest. They're open. They're unaffected by your negative stuff. They're really unaffected in a lot of ways so that they can still be an on track to everything they want to be and they don't get off track. They focus on strengths, not weaknesses. They're in the present, not in the past or in the future. They're emotionally aware 
and they are the best version of themselves. And that's what we want for you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that seems like a, almost a cliche now. It's, it's almost overused. The best, version, the best version of version, yourself. Yeah. But in a way, it really is true because that's what the true self is. And so what we've just done is, is contrast for you the, the differences uh, in the way the false self part of you works and the way that the true self part of you works. So we use those terms, false self, true self. And what we want to do is to live in the in, in the true self. We live out of the true self. And the true self is really who you are. The true self is all your dreams and passions, what you know about yourself, everything logically and irrationally that you know about yourself. And it's it's always hopeful. Um, and it's not the negative. It's not negative at all. So anytime you hear the negative inside about yourself or thinking about others, um, you, then you know that's the false self. Mm-hmm. And that is the child. That's the brain that was there when you were first born. Before the rest of the brain grew around, the, made it very logical and rational based on your age and all the knowledge about you. And so you can learn to live in this, the adult brain, the true self. And when you hear those negative things, to not really act on them or react to them and not have them trigger you. And if you, when I say trigger, if you've ever seen someone have road rage and you're in the car with them and somebody pulls in front of them and they just turn into this other person and you're like, oh my gosh, let me out of the car. <laughs> oh my gosh, who is this person? That's what we're talking about. And that's an extreme version. But you can see people that get triggered into anger. Um, triggered into sadness, triggered, and they say things. Usually they say things that you don't like. It's a part of a person that you don't like. It's a part of you that you don't like. Right. And so, uh, and everybody has triggers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, but the, the the very first step, it seems to me, okay, um, and when it comes to thinking about the false self, true self, those kinds of things, is, is awareness, wouldn't you say? I mean, awareness, we yes. have to be aware that this is true, that this is a part of our humanness, that all people are like this, and that I have a, a, a false self inside me. I have a true self inside me who's the real me, and I don't want to put down the real me. I want to put down the, the false me, the one that's not really me, that tries to act out and uh, doesn't really know what it's doing, but uh, I end up uh, paying the price for that. And so I, I become aware of that, and then I become aware of what my false self looks like, which we've just gone over. Right. That's the negative uh, uh, part of, of, of all of that, and uh, the condemning part and the angry part and, and of those kinds of things. Uh, the dishonest part. I'm try- I try to be who somebody I'm not. I try to let people see only certain parts of me. And, all and the that. self-awareness, being aware that you do it, is the beginning to change anything. You know, yeah, exactly. Admitting that you have this, these issues, but also being able to identify what it looks like and how to work on it. And, um, you know, I have a black belt in karate and my false self name, I kind of gave it to myself. That part of me is called the karate kid that I want to fight or run, you know, or um, grind people in the gravel. And that's the way I used to be. And it wasn't real obvious. It was that I had to avoid. And so yeah, I did yeah. that. And I don't know how much you know about karate, but they say if you if you can run, run. If you can't run, just harm. And if you can't just harm, then kill (laughs) so i don't anyway it's kind of funny and so getting rid of that part of you mainly not letting it lead you anymore to be able to be in the driver's seat of your life to to achieve what you want is to be aware and um and and not to let these negative statements that came in from your parents and you know i mean you were a kid they couldn't be logical and rational with you they had to tell you and lots of times it came out negative that brain just takes it in and repeats it to you. To, it tries to keep you humble that way. But a lot of people can make them fearful, shameful, angry. And so it doesn't always keep you humble. It just makes you feel bad about yourself. There are some people that are motivated by that. But we really want you to be able to feel the joy and get rid of those false self triggers that trigger you into that. Yeah, and, and it's not always that I'm trying to be aggressive. You know, uh, part of what the false self tells us is to just shut up and mind your own business. You know, the, the keep a low profile, fly under mm-hmm. the radar. Nobody will notice you and it'll be OK. That is not true. Right. Uh, that that is unhealthy. That is a false self view of the world. Another one says, don't start anything because you'll never finish. If you, if you start, you'll never get it right. So just in my, why start? OK. And so that's a false self view as well. And so I guess when we, we need to begin recognizing when those negative false self voices come out that, uh, you know, what's going on and we want to push back against those. And so that's that's part of what we try to help people see. When I see those characteristics that are negative and I see them, I need to be aware of those. Then I push back and I try to move in a different direction, which would be along the lines of the uh, the true self uh, uh, characteristics. So we have a caller. David Cook is on the phone. Are you there, David? 
Yes, I am, man. Hi. Right in the right in the middle of grocery day at the church. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, do you? Uh, thanks for calling. Are you wanting to ask Jim a question, or me a question, or both of us a question? Uh, 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 actually, uh, this question is from one of my parishioners, and I told him this, uh, if anybody knows an answer to this, it would be Jim. <laughs> like well, I don't know about that. Yeah. Don't put me up there, dude. <laughs> well, I'm going to give the I'm going to give the phone to Billy Hooper, one of my parishioners. Hi, Billy. Let him ask you the question. Great. Okay. Thanks, David. Yeah. Billy, are you on? Uh, hey. Yes, sir. I am. Welcome. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Helping a lot of people out up here. All right. <laughs> Let me. I need to give a disclaimer before you ask your question, and that is that I don't know everything you know there is to stuff. know. So, uh, but what's on your mind? What can I do to help? Well, when Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, what did he mean by forsaken? Uh, when, that's, a, that's a great wow. question. It's a very important question on, on Easter. Uh, the whole thing is that uh, you know, Jesus uh, realized that he would have to be condemned in our place, right? That's what Easter is all about, the death of Christ. Right. Jesus died in our place. So when he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that he's saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And uh, he, was re- he wasn't really asking a question because he didn't know the answer, and that's what throws us off sometimes. Jesus did know the answer to that question, and he is referring back to Old Testament Scripture uh, that had to do with the, the Messiah, the suffering servant coming to die for the people. That Messiah would be forsaken by God the Father. He would be forsaken on behalf of the people. He would die for the people. And uh, through that uh, death, they would have life. And so Jesus is not saying so much, why God, why, Father, are you killing me? He's saying to the people standing around the cross, go look up. This is Psalm 22, by the way. He quotes Psalm 22. And he's saying to these people, go check out Psalm 22, because it will tell you exactly what's happening here. Hopefully that's that's some help for you. Well, thank you. David said you had all the answers. (laughs) Hey, Billy, where are you calling from? We're calling from Lexington, Oklahoma. Lexington, Oklahoma. We have a lot of listeners in Oklahoma. Thank you so much, Billy. We appreciate you. You have a wonderful Easter. And happy Easter to you, too. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, David. That was a really good question. It was a good question, and it's a question that people have asked uh, through the ages, really. You know, why would Jesus ask, why are you forsaking me? Well, and it just seems strange, but some people say God had to turn his back on him, and he felt it. He he felt the coldness of it. And so he turns him to Psalm 22. The word he quotes the words of Psalm 22 at that point, and so that's the answer. Thank you so much. You guys stay right here. Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling in Hazlitt, Texas is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. Sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to lifesolutionscoachingandcounseling.com or email them at lifesolutions.com. CC at yahoo.com. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-985-1813 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you a copy of The Number One Mistakes Retirees Are Making With Their Investments Today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-985-1813 now. Again, that's 800-985-1813. Employees of J.D. Melberg Financial have the appropriate licenses for the products they offer. Lighting, it's key to a 
decorated home. And Fashion Lamps at 4414 Lover's Lane in Dallas has stylish lamps and shades to complement your decor. Have a lamp that needs rewired or repaired? Fashion Lamps can fix it. They also reline lampshades and clean and repair chandeliers. Fashion Lamps has a large selection of shades and unique finials that can update the look of any lamp. Call Fashion Lamps today at 214-987-1004 and get 20% off lamp and shade purchases. Remember, Fashion Lamps. Danzinger and Delano Attorneys, Houston. Attention. Have you been diagnosed with lung cancer or mesothelioma? Did you spend your life working hard in a shipyard or in the railroad industry? Were you a pipe fitter in the oil or gas industry? Maybe you worked in construction or are a proud Navy veteran. If you worked in any of these industries, there's a likelihood you worked with and around toxic levels of asbestos. If you've been diagnosed with lung cancer or mesothelioma and were exposed to asbestos, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call 800. 814-5199. Our attorneys have been fighting for over 20 years to make sure that mesothelioma and lung cancer victims get the compensation they're entitled to. Our guarantee to you is that we only get paid if you get paid. So if you've been diagnosed with lung cancer or mesothelioma and were exposed to asbestos, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call now, 800-814-5199. That's 800-814-5199. We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-854-1055. 800-854-1055. You're getting better all the time. Now, back to Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back. We hope you have learned how to be humble and you know, really strive for humility and just all of those great virtues that you want to have in your profile today. And we wanted to end just letting you hear a wonderful song. And um, we just say happy Easter to you for tomorrow and just hope that you enjoy it and have a blessed time with you and your family.
Slay. 